If there's a pitfall to be had in moving to Office 365, I'm pretty sure my company ran across it. Um, we just kind of jumped in without reading any of the documentation. So uh, when you first sign up for your trial, be real careful. Either use the name that you plan to use forever with them or use a name that you know you're going to throw away. Um, you know, you have to pick a name. ConcentratedTech.onMicrosoft.com is what everything gets. I would recommend if you're going to go in with a trial and you're not sure what plan you might actually go for, then sign up for the trial with a fake name. FredBarney.onMicrosoft.com. So you can play around and then throw that away and come back and sign up with the real name you plan to use. Uh, that's one. Uh, picking a plan was hard for us. You know, we thought we were going to be on one of the the basic plans, the, I guess the P plans, the small business plans, and you start looking at some of the limitations in SharePoint, we started thinking, oh, you know, I think we're going to be on an E plan. We're not an enterprise, really, there's five or six of us, but that's the plan that has the features we need. So you really have to spend some time considering that. Uh, gosh, you better have someone who knows PowerShell. Kind of a shame, right? They, they sell Office 365 as this just go do it all on the web, but that's not really true. If you need to import five or 600 external addresses, contacts into your address book, PowerShell. Um, this has been fixed, but when we did it, uh, our send as, when you send email, our send as addresses were coming up as that concentrated tech dot on Microsoft.com, not our, our vanity domain, concentrated tech.com. And it was a PowerShell command to go change that for all of our users. So yeah, they kind of say it's all nice and easy and, and, and self-service, but if you've got no IT staff and no IT experience, I would really consider not buying O365 from Microsoft. Buy it from one of their partners who can do a little bit of value add and, and walk you through some of those steps. Uh, they can get you through a lot of the, the I think, the hiccups. And the other big one was migration. Who would have thought that was hard? Apparently, if you put too much data into an Office 365 folder over a short period of time, they start to throttle you. So if you can imagine migrating 10,000 messages, you get throttled really quick, and then your migration takes two days. If you call O365 support and let them know that that's what you're doing, they'll turn that throttle off for a little while to let your migration go through. Uh, so then you can get a self-service migration tool. Quest has one uh, on demand for email migration or something. Uh, send your users to it. Uh, they get a little email. They type their old email address, their new email address, their old password, their new password, and it's done. Taken care of. You as the admin can see who's done it and who has left to do it. Uh, that was a huge help for us, and I, I think trying to do migration using the built-in O365 tool is for the birds. You absolutely want to definitely not hit that pitfall and, and find a migration tool that's going to work a little better.